What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 14 beta 7 for a few days now and as I do every single Saturday, I wanted to give you guys an update on how the software has been running in terms of the performance, the battery life, the bugs, bug fixes, and of course, any new features or changes that were discovered after my initial what's new video. So first off, let's go ahead and just point out the obvious here. Beta 7 is great. It is the best beta yet and it is really the first time since testing these iOS 14 betas that I feel like we're close to a GM because beta 6 felt great but I still had issues. I still had glitches. I still had bugs but beta 7 fixed most of those and we'll talk about that shortly, but this feels like we're very, very close to a GM, which of course is expected from a beta seven, but still it feels great. So as far as any additional new features and changes, you should not really be expecting much from a seventh beta, but there were just a couple of things that I've seen talked about in beta seven that are new. And the first one is actually this right here. So this is a new UI for dismissing suggestions in the spotlight search. So I got this from a user over on Reddit and you can see here we have like this little menu right here with a down vote and that looks a little bit different than it did in previous betas where it basically just showed you the regular 3D touch menu instead of this. So that is new. Also, if we go into our settings and then go down to privacy, location services, some people were actually missing the significant locations before. So right here inside of system services, significant locations was missing for some people. Now I did not have this, but for some people it was missing in beta six and it came back in beta seven. So I'm still not sure why that disappeared for some people. And I don't know if it was just for a specific device or not, but whatever the case may be, it is back in beta seven. But aside from those two changes, really nothing else has changed besides what I talked about in my initial what's new video. So now let's move on to the bugs that were fixed in beta seven, because this is where I really think beta seven shots. I think beta seven was a great, great update for fixing bugs that I've been experiencing over the past few betas. And the first one I want to talk about is one that I've talked about a lot in these beta videos. And that is that I can now finally click the first application in my app library folders every single time. So I talked to you guys about this before, but on my main device, I would go over to my app library and I would never be able to click this first icon right here, but check this out. Boom. I can open it. Boom. I can open it. You can see there, I can open up every single application now, the first application. And look at that, it was a little lag right there. So of course this is still a beta and there are still things like that that are gonna happen. I'm gonna leave this in here just so you guys can see that happening in real time. But the point is you can now see that you can click the first icon here inside of the app library and it works perfectly fine. Whereas in every previous beta, that was an issue that was a bug for me. So for some reason it didn't happen on my iPhone 11 Pro. It only happened on my Pro Max. So whatever the case may be, I'm not sure why it worked on one device and not on the other. So that's how I know it didn't affect every single person, but it did affect me and I showed you guys in multiple videos, but now that's thankfully been fixed here in beta seven. Now also the back tap feature has improved greatly here in beta seven. So I've not had near as many false triggers as I did in beta six and previous beta. So before, as you guys know, the back tap feature, first off, if we go to our settings and then go to accessibility and then go to touch, and then all the way down to back tap, you can see right here, I have it off on this, I have it on on my main device. But basically, if we just wanna go home right here with a double tap, just double tap the back of the screen or the back of the phone, and it takes me back to the home screen. So if we just go into calendar here, double tap the back of the phone, and it takes us to the home screen. So now I found that it does not have near as many false triggers, meaning that just because I set my phone down or just when I have it in my pocket unlocked, it's not gonna take me to the home screen or perform whatever action back tap is set to just from that. So it seems to be more you know, tuned in to actual touches with your finger on the back of the phone now. And just because you, you know, ruffle it around your phone like this, it's not going to trigger that. So let's just test it out just to kind of show you guys. So you can see here, this before and previous betas would take you back to the home screen. It would initiate that double tap, just moving it around like this or you know, setting it down on your desk, it would take you to the home screen. And as you can see there, beta seven has greatly improved the accuracy of back tap. And that is great to see because this was a great feature, but I was not gonna use it because it was just so finicky. And no matter what you did, you know, it would just initiate that action, even though you weren't actually touching the back of your phone. So thankfully Apple has really improved the back tap feature here in beta seven. Now, thankfully beta seven has also fixed one of the major messages bugs. And that would be when you would add a contact, when you would have a contact saved in your phone, but you were in a group chat, sometimes it wouldn't actually show the contacts name. It would show like their letter or their profile picture over here on the left. So it knew that it was saved as a contact, 
but when it would show the name of the person, it would just show their full phone number and not their contact name. So that's been fixed in beta seven, especially in my group chat, my big group chat that I have over on my main phone, I've noticed that it has been fixed. Another great fix in messages is that the reactions can now be viewed instantly when you want to see who reacted to something in a group chat. So you can see right here, multiple people reacted to this photo. If I tap and hold up top, it shows who reacted right there. So before in beta six, it would just take forever to actually show up right here, you know, maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then you could start seeing the people who reacted, but now it happens right away as you can see right there, which is nice. Also the spotlight search when you would search for an application has been fixed. So before in beta six and previous betas, when you would type in something, sometimes these applications would just simply disappear. Like if I were to type in Twitter, right before I could tap on it, it would just simply disappear. And I talked about this in previous videos as well, but that has been fixed. As you can see, it stays there. I could tap on it and everything. I've also heard that the voiceover lag has been fixed here in beta seven. So I don't use voiceover, but for those of you who use voiceover, apparently there was some lag in previous betas, but now that seems to be solved here in beta seven. I saw multiple people mention that. And then we also have a fix inside of the health application. So if we go to browse and then to activity and let's just say active energy, if we go ahead and switch from the day to the week, to the month, to the year view, you can see everything adjusts accordingly. And previous betas, there was a little bit of lag here. And sometimes I wouldn't actually switch the view as it should. So any kind of bug inside the health application related to the, you know, the hour, the day, the month, the year, you know, and, and switching properly has been fixed. It's not just for this section right here. There are multiple sections inside of health where that was an issue, but that's been fixed in beta seven. So there are a lot of bug fixes in beta seven. However, there are still some remaining bugs in iOS 14. So the first one I want to talk about is actually right here on this widget. And you can see that the notes widget still shows up blank sometimes. So I've tried going into notes and then going back to the home screen and it still just shows up blank. Even when I add a new notes widget, sometimes it will just show up completely blank like this. So that is still a bug and I would expect bugs still with like the widgets and the app library since they're brand new features to iOS. I would expect bugs like this, but hopefully that does get fixed before the final release. Also, I noticed that the music widget does not update as frequently as I would wish. Now, I don't think this is technically an issue with the widget. I think it's more of an issue with Apple Music, the service and updating, you know, what you've recently listened to. But still, I wish that would update more frequently. It took a little while, at least like 10 minutes after I was listening to this album right here to show up in the widget. So I wish that would just update more frequently. And again, I think that's on Apple music and not just the widget itself. Now also shortcut automations still are not working as they should in iOS 14 beta seven. So I have an automation on my main device, my iPhone 11 pro max, where basically when I wake up, it speaks to me and tells me the weather and the time and the chance of rain and things like that but it doesn't work properly. It'll just like start and then it stops after saying like one letter of what it's supposed to say. So shortcut automations are still not fully working in iOS 14. I've also noticed some issues with Snapchat. So sometimes Snapchat will just show a black screen and you can't even take a picture. You have to fully close out of the application and go back into it. Also, when you take a picture, take a look at this, the exposure like brightens up and it gets brighter than it should be. And you basically have to put a filter on to make it back so normal. So there are some issues with the Snapchat application and hopefully that's just on Snapchat and we get an update to the application sooner rather than later. And then as far as bugs go on the iPad and iPad OS 14 at beta seven, here is that bug I was talking about where you would get small icons on the home screen of iPad OS 14 and beta seven. So somebody sent me this over on Twitter. So shout out to Brandon, the real Brandon right there. Um, he has this screenshot here where you can see these small icons, which just look really funny. Even a folder up here is small. So that is one of the bugs I talked about in my what's new video. And here is an example of that. And some people also had their widgets showing up small as well. So like these widgets up here would sometimes be small, like they are on iOS. So that's strange. And I would definitely expect that to be fixed in the next beta. So those are some of the bugs and I would expect most of them to be fixed within the next beta or two. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance has been absolutely excellent. So I've not had a single lockup or a random freeze in an application. I've not had any random resprings or random reboots or anything like that. All the applications respond well. The games play great. I really have no complaints. You guys saw that brief little lag when I was in the app library and going into an application. So there is still, you know, minor lag and things like that but that's really nothing major. And that's honestly the first time that's ever happened to me in beta seven or even beta six that had never happened. So that was pretty rare. 
and performance overall is great on iOS 14 beta 7. And the same can be said about iPadOS 14 beta 7 as well. I've not had any issues at all. I've used the Apple Pencil pretty much every day with it, no issues there. I've played games on it, I've taken notes, I've done you know picture in picture YouTube, really no issues at all with the performance on iPadOS 14 beta 7. And thankfully I've not had the small icon bug on my device. Now, as far as the battery life goes, battery life is also excellent here in beta 7. So beta 6 was a big improvement for most people, myself included, and beta 7 should continue on that with even better battery life. And it should continue getting gradually better, you know, as these final few betas get released. I'd say that we're almost at iOS 13 level battery life here in beta 7. Now we're not there quite yet, but it's getting close to being just as good a battery life as iOS 13.7. And that is a very good sign. And that usually indicates that we're getting pretty close to a GM build. And I'll talk about that here in a moment after we take a look at the community poll for this week. So just as I do every week, I have a poll here on the community tab on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel and then scroll over to community, you'll see this poll right here. I do this every week and I ask this week, how has iOS 14 beta seven been for you? And let's go ahead and take a look. So for me, it's been excellent. So let's go ahead and see those percentages. So 25%, I believe that is the highest rate yet. So if we go down and compare that to beta six, yeah, huge improvement. And this is based off of 14,000 votes in 19 hours. So I appreciate every one of you who are voting in these polls. It really makes my life a lot easier. And it also helps you guys understand how the software is running. So 25% said excellent, no annoying bugs versus 15%. That is a huge improvement. 10% is a lot when we're talking about 14,000 votes here. So 15% on good compared to 25%. So that shows you that beta seven was a nice improvement over beta six. We have 3% on decent and bad buggy and bad battery life versus 4% on beta six. We have 2% on terrible. I had to downgrade versus 2% and then 55% not on iOS 14 versus 54%. But the main thing to look at here is the huge improvement in excellent. So it went from 15% to 25%. That is massive. So now let's go ahead and check out some of these comments here that you guys left. Aloha boy said that using reduced transparency mode, some library doc folders have a white background. So I actually think that's how it's supposed to be. So reducing transparency mode means that the folders would have to be, you know, white because that's kind of a blur. And the whole point of reduced transparency is to reduce the blur and effects like that. So I think that's supposed to be like that. I think it's supposed to have a white background, but I don't use this feature. So correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. Alaska Heston here says that it feels pretty solid so far. I haven't encountered any annoying bugs and battery life feels kind of close to what I was getting on 13.6.1. Something I've noticed though, is that when listening to audio messages using the earpiece, the screen will not turn off, but stay on. That didn't happen before on iOS 13 nor the first betas. And he's saying that's happening on his 11 pro max. So that is an interesting bug. I've not encountered that, but it seems like some people tend to agree here with that. Lexa here said, excellent on my iPhone 11 pro messages bug is gone. This doesn't feel like a beta anymore. And you can see there 23 people agreed with that. And I would actually agree with that as well. It doesn't really feel as much like a beta as it has previously. Adriano here says that randomly Siri will activate itself when I didn't hold the side button or say those magic words on my iPhone 10s. So that's a weird bug. I've not experienced that, but if you guys have, let me know down in a comment below. Somebody here, Ray said that when playing games and suddenly restarts, which is pretty annoying. So I've not had that at all. I've played many games on my device and have not had any random restart. So that may just be an, another issue. You may want to just restore your device and install fresh. I know a lot of people ask about COD mobile. So somebody was saying that COD mobile became laggy after the update. So maybe that has to do with call of duty needing to update their application to make it more in sync with beta seven and more optimized for beta seven. I've not had issues with call of duty mobile though. That's one of the main games I play on my iPad and on my iPhones and I've not had any lag. So it appears that some people are though. Michael here says that picture in picture while changing episodes and Netflix is quite buggy. The screen turns black and I have to restart the app. That's the only bug I've noticed so far. So I've not actually used picture in picture with Netflix. So apparently that is a bug. I will test that out after this video. And I guess I'll talk about that and see if it's been fixed in the next beta. Aiden here is still having issues with the keyboard. So he said that his keyboard goes invisible sometimes, seems random so far. And you can see here, I asked him in which applications. And he says that it happens most often in the app library when I swipe down to search, but also happens when typing 
within notification responses and in notes. So yeah, more bugs with the app library, I would expect those, but he's also saying it happens in quick responses to maybe like messages and things like that. So that's interesting. I have had that in previous betas, but I've not encountered it here in beta seven, at least not yet. I literally cannot install apps anymore. Now, I don't think that's at all related to iOS 14 beta seven. That's probably another issue you have going on there. Emilio here says that the shooting star animation is still missing in iMessages. Can you cover that in one of your videos? So there you go. The shooting star animation is still missing. Maybe it's not going to be in iOS 14. I'm not sure. I don't really use any of those iMessage effects or animations, but apparently that is missing in beta seven. And then the final ones I'm going to mention here fixes the music app crashing when trying to play music on my iPad mini four. So that is good news. Caesar here says it's been great. I'm using an iPhone eight and they finally fixed the problem with voiceover. Voiceover is now as good as it was on the public version of iOS. And then somebody also is expecting or anticipating the spatial audio feature as we all are for the AirPods Pro here in iOS 14, because that toggle is just simply a toggle and the feature doesn't actually work yet. But anyways, thanks to all of you guys who commented and voted on this poll. Of course, there are you know 234 comments, so I'm not gonna read every single one of them here on the video, but those are just some of the ones I wanted to highlight. And again, thanks to everybody who voted and commented on that poll. Now, as far as when to expect the next beta, beta eight, we can probably expect that next week. Now, next week is a holiday week, so it is the week of Labor Day. Labor Day is on Monday, September 7th, but we can probably expect to see iOS 14 beta eight, either on September 8th or September 9th. That is the Tuesday and the Wednesday of the week. We could probably expect to see beta eight then. I don't think it's gonna be the GM build. That's just me, just my gut feeling saying it's not going to be the GM build. I think we'll see that either the last week of September or maybe even early October but I would expect to see beta eight on the eighth or the ninth. Hopefully it's on the eighth so that we get beta eight on the eighth. I think that would be kind of cool, but also we will probably be seeing new Apple products next week as well, based on a tweet from John Prosser. We could be seeing a new iPad and also a new Apple watch as early as next week via a site refresh or a press release from Apple. So next week should be really interesting. And of course I will keep you guys posted over on Twitter and also in the Discord server, which are both linked down in the description below. Now I also wanted to mention that iOS 14, the final version will probably be out before the 2020 iPhones get released. So that's not normally what Apple does, but since we see a delay in the iPhone 12 lineup this year, we probably will see iOS 14 be released before the new iPhones and the new iPhones will launch and come with iOS 14.1 on them. So that's why I think that we'll see iOS 14, the final version be released probably in the last week of September. And then we'll probably see the new iPhones at some point in October. But of course, stay tuned because nothing is official just yet. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14 at beta seven, a great, great release and really shows that we are close to a GM build. If I had to guess, I'd say that we're probably a couple of betas away from a GM. So maybe a beta 10, or maybe a beta 11, one of those two will probably be the GM build. So we're getting very, very close and there's just a few bugs that still need to be fixed, but we're well on our way, especially with the performance and the battery life. But anyways, let me know how beta seven is for you. And if you wanna add anything else onto this video, let me know down in the comment section below. You guys know I love reading those and responding to those as well. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any of my future iOS 14 coverage. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.